Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Composite Simulation in the Age of Experience. Uh, just to give you guys a brief overview, this webinar will be about um, 45 to 50 minutes. Uh, we're going to have a Q&A session as well at the end. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask us and we will try our best to answer them at the end. Um, I would like to uh, introduce Greg, who is joining us from Deso Systems. He's a Simulia Senior Industry um, Solutions Manager, and he will be delivering the presentation today. Uh, he has been with Deso Systems uh, since 2003, and he has been involved with the integrated analysis products ever since, including CATIA Analysis, V5, AFC, V6, and now 3D Experience. Prior to joining DS, he worked as a product design engineer and FEA consultant for various industries, including aerospace, uh, with a focus on composites. Uh, we will also have an intro to VIAS delivered by uh, Srikant, who is the director of simulation services at VIAS. She, pro she provides consultancy support and training uh, support at VIAS. Before VIAS, he was a CAE support manager at Deso Systems headquarters for 10 years. Uh, she also has a PhD in solid mechanics from Brown. So um, we also have Arindam Chakraborty joining us, who is the Vice President of Advanced Engineering Advice. He will be helping us out with uh, some questions at the end. So please feel free to ask us any questions or uh, our email addresses are also listed on the screen. So uh, you, you guys can always shoot us an email if you have any questions. Um, so now, uh, Shri, I will let you take over and give a, an introduction to Vias. Hi, uh, you can hear me, Kanis? Yes, we okay. can hear you, Shri. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Shrikant, uh, Shri Giriraju, and I'll go through the quick introduction of Vias to you. So I'll present a brief overview of our company, uh, who we are. We are a platinum partner, uh, value-added reseller of Dassault Systems Simulia. Uh, we handle uh, the core products of Abacus, iSight, IP Safe, Tosca, but also the new acquisitions such as uh, CST, um, Xflow, and so on, uh, which are part of the brand Simulia. We also deal with Ketia, Delmia, Enovia, and 3D Experience platform solutions too. Uh, we have a team of uh, with diverse uh, industry experience uh, spanning oil and gas, machinery and equipment, petrochemical and process, nuclear, aerospace, medical devices, manufacturing and automotive, basically covering uh, all aspects of uh, uh, simulation that you may need in uh, most of the industries. Uh, we are based in Houston. Uh, you can see actually our office building. We occupy third floor on the, on the top right picture. Uh, we also have offices in Chicago, Cincinnati, and San Francisco. Our team has a very uh, good expertise uh, with PhD and masters uh, in, the, in the various fields such as uh, solid mechanics, fluid mechanics, materials and corrosion, numerical analysis, optimization and reliability data analytics. Our core activities, as you can see, includes uh, engineering consultancy, um, software sales, training and support. Uh, we also provide automize, automation and customization uh, and also uh, any particular training that you may need uh, for uh, software uh, uh, skill development. Uh, going specifically to our technical capabilities, uh, we can actually uh, provide simulation services to your component design and also validation too. Uh, we can also uh, take up uh, fracture and damage mechanics uh, based on FEA actually uh, for your particular components and uh, workflows. Uh, we can also uh, work with uh, actually develop engineering critical assessment uh, for any in-service equipment that you may have based on standard codes such as API, etc. Uh, we can also provide uh, optimization of your designs uh, using software such as uh, Tosca and iSight. Uh, we can also provide vibration assessment or structure analysis based on structure analysis. Um, and the new uh, capabilities of Simulia uh, through acquisitions such as CST, we can also provide that uh, for simulation of electromagnetic systems. Uh, we also have a very good team. Uh, in CFD uh, to provide you multi-physics simulations, uh, handling flow analysis and thermal analysis. Uh, we can also take up uh, fatigue analysis based on stress and strain uh, with varying temperatures using FE safe software. Uh, of particular interest to this audience would be that we can also handle compute composites modeling and analysis. So in case you have any particular uh, requirements, please do reach out to us. 
uh, we can also provide automation through scripting, uh, Python scripts, and also maybe uh, even the user subroutines or anything specific that you may want to add to your workflow. Uh, also, we can handle the digital mockup development and systems engineering too. What's our value proposition? Uh, we uh, ensure that the client is completely satisfied. Uh, their success is our success uh, through our technical capabilities and innovations. Uh, we also uh, provide, uh, have a very strong uh, domain knowledge in FEA and CFD. And so we can actually uh, work with you uh, in various industrial applications. Uh, we can review even your existing simulation workflow and maybe provide you some kind of feedback of how to improve it uh, based on performance or anything that you may have difficulties in that uh, in using that workflow. We can also provide some kind of solution to that. Uh, we actually uh, have a very good uh, training uh, process. Uh, we, uh, we can provide a customized training based on particular needs that you may have, or also we can provide the standard trainings too that are part of the DS uh, standard uh, training procedures. Uh, we, we can do that in-house at your premises or on-site at our office or also online. Uh, just to note, we also uh, handle a lot of the Abacus training at Boeing and many other uh, big industries, uh, big companies too. Um, and we also offer software development services uh, related to Abacus, like uh, user subroutines, user elements, and also Python scripts uh, that will allow you to have some uh, enhanced pre and post processing capabilities. Uh, to reach out to us, these are the con this is the contact info. Uh, we have a phone number and website and email. So uh, in case there's any specific need regarding your uh, support or training or even engineering consultancy, please do reach out to us. Uh, we'll be happy to uh, work with you. Over to you, Kanis. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Shri, for that wonderful introduction. I will uh, pass the control over to Greg now, who is joining us from Deso Systems. Hi, Greg, would you mind sharing your screen? Okay, great. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen, Greg. Okay, great. Hello, everyone. Uh, Greg Albertson here. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, possibly good evening, depending on uh, who's on the call and where you sit. Uh, as previously mentioned, I'm with uh, Samulia at the Soul Systems, and I primarily focus um, on the integrated analysis tools. So a little bit different than a lot of other uh, Samulia people you may have um, participated with in the past with classical Abacus and CAE and so forth. I've been around for uh, long time as she introduced, um, and majorly focusing on the integrated tools with a lot of history and composites. What I'm gonna go over today is a pretty good overview of uh, all of our, not all of, but uh, a majority of our composite simulation tools and capabilities. A little bit of background on the Dassault Systems capabilities and CATIA as well, and how that can work into the flow for composite simulation. So with this, um, the use of composites today, you know, uh, even several years ago, you know, this, this kind of little report came out in 2015, which is pretty old and outdated now, but, you know, composites are being used everywhere. Uh, composites are heavily being used in aerospace, uh, wind energy, uh, vehicles now, consumer products, uh, maybe the cell phone that you have in your hand, you're listening to this phone call, maybe the laptop case. Uh, that you have composites are everywhere now and this is a snapshot on the development of the 787 and how much composites is actually being used uh, at that report time of the, the 787 so you can see a lot a lot a lot um, you know there's still some metal bits here and there uh, a lot of times for the the strike zones or the impact zones on the leading edges of these wings and um, nacelles and different things like that but in general you can see in this snapshot that uh, composites is being used everywhere and so that raises uh, awareness and concern and interest uh, for all sorts of different reasons for for light weighting for uh, you know durability and different things like that as well and manufacturing also um, as many of you probably already know on this call here there's a lot of challenges with composites uh, the materials are far more complex than their metal counterparts you know whether we're talking about durability or safety issues uh, it's a little bit different to, you know, put a composite product together than it is a, just a standard sheet metal or machine part, uh, as we all know. Um, 
their anisot anisotropy is uh, a little interesting as well. So uh, rather than rather than just having isotropic materials, you know, we can really tailor our our layups and our composites to put those flexures and strengths in the directions and at the specific locations that we want to, you know, obviously to better optimize our, our designs. Uh, a lot of interest in damage and residual life for composites. So that's a very high concern when we're building things out of composites. You know, how long is it going to last? What's going to happen to it if a, if a rock hits it or uh, you know, all these other types of things. And as you'll see towards the end of the presentation, we can address a lot of those uh, damage simulation uh, interactions with inside of our tools here as well. So there's lots of things uh, that challenge us to design things out of composites. And hopefully through the use of the Dassault systems and Simulator portfolio, we can alleviate uh, a lot of those concerns and, and streamline your, your current workflow. So if we look at the general workflow of, you know, creating a composite uh, product, you know, we're going to start with design and manufacture. You know, a lot of composite products can be manufactured a variety of different ways. Uh, you know, the, the terminology out there today and nowadays for manufacturing is this whole terminology of additive manufacturing. So if we think historically of machining parts, you know, that's, that's not additive, right? We're, we're removing material away from a, a metal part. And so that's, you know, um, negative manufacturing, if you want to call it that way. But additive manufacturing is just building things up. So injection molding, that can be considered additive manufacturing. Simple hand layup of composites, that's additive manufacturing. We're adding things together. So there's lots of different ways that we start to take a look at this additive manufacturing sort of scenario. And that's, you know, really what composites is doing here. Multi-scale modeling. So once we start to construct our composite products, we have a variety of different ways to look at that. We can look at it at a very uh, high macroscopic level, at a very high level, and that's maybe where we're taking a look at some smeared properties. You know, we may have a, a layup of 100 plies, but we just want to generalize it into uh, sometimes what we terminology is black metal. You know, we, we just create, you know, one standard sort of modulus out of that whole thing and look at it from a, a macro level. But we can also dive right down into the details of looking, you know, at the, the fiber matrix interaction at the very minute micro mechanics level as well. Uh, so there's, again, it's a multi-skill approach. So depending on what you want to look at and what your interest is for, you know, evaluating and representing the composite layup we may have a, a solution or a workflow for that in particular. Uh, and then ultimately, you know, we want to take a look at how all this is going to perform. You know, we want to look at our, our stresses, our displacements, maybe the interactions between the ply layers. Uh, what about fracture and failure? You know, a lot of times we can't even see uh, that we may have damage to our composite parts. So we may want to take a look at that maybe uh, underneath and see what happens in a, a barely visible impact or composites crush or crack propagation. So these are things that are uh, of, of high interest to those designing parts out of composites. So with inside of the Dassault Systems portfolio, we have, again, a, a range of tools and processes that we go through, uh, starting from prelim preliminary design all the way through tooling. And the products that we have to be able to do that are unique to each one of those. But more importantly, these are all integrated and relate one to another and talk to each one. So when I'm going through creating my preliminary design for my composite layup, I will then be able to consume and utilize that information in my composite simulation or my manufacturing or my tooling design. So it's all related. This whole one platform thing is real. It's reality that all this information then is all connected together, one set of data for everything. So once I create that layup, I don't have to do all these shenanigans of importing and exporting. You know, I have all the information right there in front of me that's real time that I'm looking at and I can utilize that at any point along the design cycle. All right, so we have a singular interface. So whether we're looking at uh, you know creating the parts, 
We have an interface, you know, where we go through it, standard kind of uh, Katia interface here, maybe constructed a little bit differently if you're familiar with the V5 world. Uh, 3D experience is, is all embedded here. Uh, same kind of spec tree history structure, a lot of the same commands, but a lot of enhancements in the capability of the software itself and the relationship between the different applications within inside of the software. So as we can see here, you know, this is the composite design workbench. You know, you didn't really probably even notice the change when I flipped the screens there, but if you look at the bottom of the screen here, we can see that I have a new set of toolbars down in the bottom that tells me, you know, what actions I have available to me. And then in the top left corner, it lets me know which workbench I'm actually working in. And the same thing works for uh, simulation as well. So once I switch to the simulation app, I'm not going in and out of the software. I'm right here all integrated and I'm working directly all the way through to, you know, looking at my, my results. So we can see that it's all very similar, same integration. And again, all this data is stored in the database. I'm always working on the most up-to-date model and information that I have available to me that has been saved into the database. So again, uh, that's one of the great benefits that we get from the platform is I can utilize one database and always be current. So let's talk a little bit more about the composite design. I know I'm going to talk, I'm a Simulia guy, I will definitely talk a lot about simulation, but let's talk about the design here for a little bit. So with inside of the CATIA composite design portfolio, we have a number of different ways that you can start to create your composite models. We have something that's called the zone or the grid approach. What that allows us to do is that allows us to take our geometry and then overlay a, a grid across that. And then in each one of those cells, I can specify what is my layup for each one of those cells. Uh, and then I can, you know, define what my layup, what my material is for each one of those cells. And that's a very easy to do. We can do that in a tabular format, whether I bring in an Excel file or I enter it in manually inside the CATIA composite workbench. Um, what I can also do is I can start with a solid. If I want to start with a solid, I can do that and I can use a solid slicing approach. And I just define, you know, what are my slices that go through that solid? And I can utilize that approach to then also create my uh, composite layup in that information there as well. Lastly, um, we have an Excel sheet approach, and that's what I just kind of mentioned a little bit before, where I can import uh, my layup information from an Excel file and then attach that to my geometry, and it puts it in and it creates that layup there for us also. Okay, now integration with design. So, once we start to take a look at this, integrating all this information with design, when I create that model in CATIA, I have access to the direct geometry, and then I can start to incorporate the composite layout. So we can see here, utilizing one of those approaches, I can then define how, you know, depending on how I, uh, define my layups, then I can take a look here and I can look at the sequences and the material and the layup and the angles on all of those that are directly associated to the part here. This information, then when I start to create my simulation, all that information, all that work that I had previously created in the CATIA composite design package, I can basically just attach that right here in the simulation model. I don't have to recreate my plies. What I can do as a process is go ahead and mesh my part. And then when I define my uh, materials for this part, I just define that it's going to be a composite shell and I say all plies. And then because of this software, it's all interrelated one to another, at the location of each one of these elements, it takes a look back at how my layup was created in the CATIA composite design, and then it knows at that specific location what is my actual layup. So then um, during the pre-processing stage for simulation, it'll then create all the property information cards that it needs for that simulation. So again, those are interrelated. And then when I start to take a look at the, the final results for the simulation, then I can you know, uh, take a look at some very specific composite 
you know, post-processing options in here as well. So if I want to look at Cy Hill, Cy Woo, different things like that that are very important for a composite sort of interaction, we have some dedicated post-processing capabilities for that. Now, one of the great benefits of this whole process, again, I keep coming back to it's all interrelated. So if at this final stage I have found that the product does not perform the way I wanted it to or the way I expected it to, whether it's um, not bending enough or it's bending too much, it's very easy for me to maybe even make a geometric change, make a change to the, to the ply layup. And then because all of this is interrelated and interacting together, I don't have to do anything, right? All I need to do is run my simulation, update my solve, and then, uh, you know, take a look at my results there again, because all this is, again, interrelated one to another. So it's very, very fast, especially, especially the preliminary design stage. So if I've not gone through and evaluated all my ply stacking, uh, all my ply drop-offs, uh, all that information, I can validate the the general performance of this at a preliminary design stage, which is super powerful, and then go through the detailed design and do all those ply drop-offs and then run a, a detailed simulation down the road. So again, scalability. As far as uh, getting ready for the simulation, uh, we have a lot of tools to prepare our geometry for simulation. So in the geometry prep tools, maybe for the simulation, I don't want to incorporate some fillets or things like that in here. Uh, we can come in here and do an automatic defeaturing. It'll search my part for a particular fillet radius, and then it will go ahead and deactivate those fillets. Uh, where this might be important for the design, maybe for simulation, I don't really care about those fillets, so I can go ahead and do that. And again, because the plies were associated to the part, all, if I had this meshed previously, all of that would then still be okay to go forward because it's looking at a positional location and not necessarily the actual geometry. And there's lots of different ways we can set these models up uh, to incorporate it a little bit differently as well. And then we can take a look at maybe doing some mid-surface extraction capabilities. So depending on how you have this modeled up for your composite layout, maybe you want the, the IML or the OML or perhaps the, the mid-surface. So lots of different ways we can uh, take a look at doing that here as well, okay? So going back to preliminary design, uh, I mentioned that this is an extremely valuable uh, tool to go through looking at preliminary design. So very easy to go ahead and create your pre preliminary design here. Uh, you just define your zones, what you lay up, is in each one of those locations and go ahead and define that for your uh, basically your smeared property and run your simulation and then once you validate that that's actually good to go then you can go through uh, that detailed design stage so now that I've got all of those um, taken care of I can go through and really reorder all my ply stacking maybe take a look at uh, generating my ply drop-offs doing all that information uh, incorporating that maybe matching my mesh up directly to those ply drop-offs. Uh, and then one of the other uh, great advances that we have here is the transfer of fiber orientation from manufacturing. So what this specifically means is if I am concerned with my draping or other terminology is producibility, uh, when we have parts of high curvature, we want to make sure that our fiber angles are not just a natural projection down from a plane. We want, as we lay up our material across these parts of high curvature, you know, that, that material gets warped a little bit during the manufacturing process. And we want to be able to capture that in the simulation mode here as well. So we have lots of capability to be able to um, calculate what those fiber orientations are at the manufacturing stage. And then we can directly transfer that information on to simulation. So very, very powerful. So we will be able to um, simulate as, as designed and as manufactured, okay? So when we do that draping, we have lots of different tools that we have available to us um, to interrogate the, the draping. So uh, when we do that, it gives us uh, locations that we may want to take a little bit further investigation into. Maybe our 
our uh, material is being stretched a little bit too much to make that and maybe we need to come back and, and do some splicing or some darting or you know doing some different things there to make the, the layup more appropriate um, we'll be able to give those predictions but again as i previously mentioned we'll be able to transfer those precise fiber angles directly into our simulation model once i'm done with the composite layup information i want to start doing the meshing uh, as you can imagine, we have a, a variety of different ways to create meshes. You know, you can just go ahead and take your part and start meshing um, ad hoc as you would like to, as you know, doing your element bed seating and different things like that. However, if you happen to simulate or design parts that are very similar time after time, uh, and you have a set of rules that you use or guidelines that you use to follow during your meshing process we have something that's called a, a rules-based measure and what this allows you to do is set up um, a catalog of meshing criteria and save it in the, the database so if i'm always going to be meshing uh, with a, an element particular size um, if anytime i I find a hole of a particular diameter. I want to capture that that hole size and make sure that I have, you know, concentric uh, mesh rings around that hole. Maybe for a, a bolt washer uh, sort of assembly situation for for uh, you know bolt pressures or things like that. Um, I guess what my point is is if you commonly use the same meshing processes, you can catalog this in a rules-based measure. And once you catalog that in rules-based measure, you can just apply that to any of your parts uh, without going through and doing that every single time, okay? The other thing that we can do is we can capture all of our grid boundaries, so all of our ply boundaries. We can capture that in the meshing as well so that our elements line up precisely to where those ply drop-offs or uh, those ramp locations are. We can do that and it's an automated approach. So again, once if that design or that ply drop-off location changes in the design, guess what? Our mesh is gonna change with it, okay? So there's kind of a high-level uh, screenshot of what that rules-based mesher does. So if I have this uh, center fuselage section with uh, some floor stringers and some other uh, ribs and stringers in there, uh, you know, I can go ahead and just open up this subassembly and apply my meshing rules to this entire subassembly, and it'll go out and, and locate all those parts and features and different things like that and mesh it appropriately. So rather than me going in here and meshing each one of these parts individually, I can use that rule at a high level and send this off to the batch mesher to have it mesh all this information. And this doesn't matter if it's a composite part, a metal part, a plastic part. Uh, this is just meshing. You know, this is 3D experience capability for meshing. For solving, uh, we have a lot of uh, different capability that we need to look at when we're uh, simulating composites. So most often, composites have to go through large deflection. So we need some sort of nonlinear capability to go through and analyze composites. So if I'm looking at you know something like a wind blade uh, or a an aircraft wing or a bicycle component or, or you know frame or something like that all of these really do exhibit uh, nonlinear behavior not from a material standpoint necessarily but from a large deflection standpoint so you, you need to be sure that your solver can handle those sort of non deflections or nonlinear deflections uh, with inside of that depending on what type of simulation you want to do uh, but whether it's buckling linear perturbation static you know all this information you know it doesn't really matter what the material we have here is. We have a lot of different uh, solver capabilities to, to solve the model uh, specifically for, for your needs. Post-processing, uh, as I mentioned previously, we have some dedicated tools specifically to evaluate composites. So, you know, we can look at maximum stress, maximum strain, damage variables. Uh, if we want to take a look at some of this information, it's all available to you in the post-processor here as well. So when I'm trying to evaluate the results for a composite, I perhaps want to evaluate each singular ply, right? So when I'm looking at metals or plastics, I'm just looking at everything as a homogeneous material and you know, uh, I've got my stresses of my uh, external surfaces, but when I'm evaluating a composite, I need to know what are the stresses 
at each one of those plies internal. So not just the surface stresses or strains. I need to know what's inside. Uh, and we have that capability to really kind of step through your model and evaluate this information on a ply-by-ply -ply basis, um, which is very valuable and very important. But you can imagine if I have a lot of plies, that could take a lot of work to go through and evaluate each one of those. So what I can start to do is through some of these smart uh, tools, I can perhaps create a, a plot uh, and take a look at, you know, a plot curve of my stresses across my part, uh, different things like that. Or maybe we can start to take a look at our envelope plots. What the envelope plots allow us to do is go through and specify what is the criteria of the results that I'm looking at need to be. So if I'm looking at stresses or strains or, or a hashing criteria or something, uh, what I can utilize is the envelope plots to go through and find that ply with the worst values associated to it. So it'll go ahead and search my entire part, product, all my plies, and it will locate and pinpoint that ply that has the, the uh, highest values associated to it. And then I can go through and make the adjustments to the design necessary, right? Okay, uh, also with inside of the portfolio, again, this is really an overview of the 3D Experience platform. A lot of what I've said here is analogous to every type of simulation you're looking at, whether it's metals or whether it's plastics or composites, right? Uh, I've also pinpointed a few things specific to composites, like the, the post-process and the pre-processing of the setup for the material, but most all these items that I've talked about across the board, it doesn't matter what you're analyzing. It, it all works on you know, all the, the different items here. Uh, and one of these in particular is our process automation. So we have something called the process composer. And if you're familiar with our uh, classical EyeSight product, this is basically the, the EyeSight capability built inside of 3D experience. And I say basically because, you know, when you come out with new products, it's not always one-to-one. -one. You know, we've added a lot of great capability, a lot of ease uh, of bringing that information in here and generating a lot of that same information, whether you're looking at DOEs or optimizations or goal setting. Uh, through the Process Composer, we're able to do that. And we're able to do that on a variety of things, whether you're just going through looking at a parameter study, you want to evaluate the various dimensional changes to your part, how that affects your simulation, you can come in here and set up a DOE. Um, now, this, very importantly, is not just restricted to running your simulations inside of 3D Experience, just like we had in our classical EyeSight workflow. We have a lot of different activity adapters down here. So during creating your uh, Process Composer workflow, you can incorporate Excel spreadsheets, and then you can incorporate some of your direct integrated 3D Experience application workbenches. Maybe you want to drop out to a command line. Maybe you want to drop out to, to Abacus or MATLAB or something like that. Basically, what this is is this is a, a you know an activity workflow connector. So it's taking all the inputs and outputs of one particular process that you use in your simulation or design workflow and passing those variable information from one to the next and being able to to reuse that in all of these. So for instance, if I have a, a little um, winglet on the edge of a wing and I want to come through and do some various parameter studies or uh, you know, ply variation studies, I can do that with inside of the process composer. You know, just go ahead and create one simulation and then dump that into a process composer workflow. And then uh, depending on what parameters uh, you want to evaluate or take a look at, then you can manipulate and use those different parameters in that workflow to, you know, again, uh, validate your design, validate a, a variety of different uh, load cases or design criteria. Very, very easy to use and very uh, great capabilities there. Okay. So uh, if you're finding, once you're using the 3D Experience platform, if you're finding that maybe all the simulation capabilities that you want to take a look at, like detailed delamination or uh, some of our crack growth prop propagation capabilities, 
some of that we haven't built directly inside of 3D Experience yet. Uh, we're in the process of taking all of our current capabilities uh, along with some of our partner products that we have from the classical uh, Abacus CAE portfolio. And we're trying to bring those into 3D Experience as best as we can, as quick as we can. However, uh, not all those capabilities are currently in there. So we realize that and we also have a, a direct workflow for that capability. So the 3D Experience platform is open to integration with other tools. Uh, one of these tools used to be a, a longtime partner with us, Simulate, that is now uh, incorporated into our PS, uh, PS ecosystem. Uh, the product is called Composite Link. And what that allows us to do, uh, and again, in a workflow that I would suggest is going through that preliminary design stage inside 3D Experience, and then once you have validated that and you'd like to go to the detail stage, go ahead and generate your detailed composite layup. And once you've completed that, then use the composite link. And then basically what happens from that is that will take the, the mesh that you've created inside of 3D Experience and all the composite properties that you've also created inside of 3D Experience. And you can open that up inside of Abacus CAE. Um, now, what you're able to do inside of Abacus CAE is, you know, the world. So whatever sort of, uh, you know, com composite capabilities or other simulation capabilities or integrations that you may have in your current uh, Abacus CAE portfolio, you can utilize that now on this composite model that you've created inside of 3D Experience. And one of the great things is, again, this is all connected and related one to another. So if I make any changes inside of 3D Experience. I can propagate those changes to Abacus. And additionally, if I change my ply stacking or make some changes to my ply setup inside of Abacus as the, the simulation expert, maybe as I go through and do that simulation, I need to make some changes and I want to be able to change that inside of CAE because maybe that's where the user knowledge is. I can do that. And once I do that, Using the composite link, I can send that updated information directly back to 3D Experience. So, lots of lots of information here, and I'm, I'm feeding you in a fast and furious sort of fire hose methodology here. But uh, hopefully, you're you're all being able to grab some uh, some good concept and, and bits of the general workflow process and the overall capabilities that we have. So some of those external capabilities that you might be interested in from a composite simulation sort of capability could be aircraft impact or environmental damage. Things that are of uh, great concern, uh, especially this time of year, uh, you know, when we got birds migrating from South America up through is, is bird strikes, right? Uh, so this is a very important thing that we want to be able to take a look at. We have you know, worked with and coupled with a lot of other uh, people in the industry to come up with some best-in-class bird strike capabilities and, and damage model prediction for our uh, models here. Uh, so bird strike, hail damage, maybe tool drop. Uh, let's hope that we don't have too many tool drops, uh, but it's a reality, right, as we're building these things in the shop. Um, you know, we, we may need to take a look at tool drop. And we need to take a look at, you know, is this aircraft or is this uh, part still flight worthy? Is it still operational worthy? So there's lots of different things that we may want to look at here. And with inside of the Simulia simulation tools, we have a way to take a look at the effects of, of all this information. Okay. Uh, one of the things that we've also invested a lot of interest in uh, or work in right now is lightning strike as well. And I'll, Got a few slides on that, but if you really want additional information on any one of these high-level specifics, please don't hesitate to contact one of the operators of the, the call here and get in contact with Vias, and they can connect you to the right experts to really help you model you know, these, these high-level sort of interactions with inside of the portfolio solution. So Abacus CAE, uh, you know, uh, if this is the, the tool that we're going to use to do um, some composite simulation, uh, we have a dedicated preprocessor for the Abacus solver, composite modeler, very great capability to come through and do some uh, composite modeling. 
But what it really allows us to do, one of the great benefits and advantages of CMA is it allows us to take that surface model that I had previously inside of 3D experience with that layup, which was basically just a, a surface um, connotation layup inside of 3D experience. And here inside of Abacus, through the use of CMA, we can use a variety of different techniques called inflation uh, or uh, solid fill. And what that does is that takes a, a look at what your actual layup is across your general mesh uh, resolution, and it will generate your property card for a thick part. So it'll go ahead and generate all of your solid elements. So if you really do need to come in here and, and model this in a thick element sort of fashion, uh, maybe this B pillar, or you're good to go ahead and model this as a, a shell orientation. But if I'm looking at like a turbine blade, uh, like an engine turbine blade or something like that, that's not going to cut it, right? I really need to understand, you know, how that layup is in, in the solid part generation. So I can go ahead and incorporate the use of CMA to, to do a lot of that capability. So I would, you know, use the composite layup management, whether we did this in 3D experience or, or using the CMA tools, you go ahead and, and you know, create that general uh, layup organization. Using ply stack plots, we can come through and validate, you know, what is the ply stack at each one of these uh, ply drop off locations. You get a quick visualization what that is. You can manage your stacking directions, making sure that, again, you're stacking in the order that you had anticipated, whether you're stacking from the IML or OML directions um, and all your particular discrete orientations. Then once you've gone ahead and created all this information, generate your mesh, generate your property information, and then through the use of CMA, it will then create either one element or, you know, depending on how many elements you want through the thickness, one element per ply or the number of elements you've specified, and then it'll create a layered element for each one of those. So depending on, again, the level of sophistication you want to include in your model, we have a variety of different ways to be able to handle that sort of situation. Then, uh, once you are, uh, again, back to un trying to understand the performance, you've created your model, positive failure modeling, uh, we have a variety of different ways to take a look at the different failure modes uh, as individual layers and plies, maybe delamination de between plies, uh, maybe you're looking at some crushing, maybe you're in the automotive industry and you've got some composites in the bumper, or maybe you're in the aerospace and, you know, you've got something else that you need to take a look at an uh, impact or something like that as well. So we have C-Zone technology, which is also available to plug into the Abacus Explicit, and you can simulate the, the crush of composite materials and all this composite information that you've previously generated. Um, so we offer a general mode to protect the onset of damage and, and model the damage evolution. So if this is a crush tube and I want to understand, you know, how this gets crushed, uh, whether we're, you know, looking at the composites or non-composites, uh, we have a variety of different ways to, again, model this sort of information. Uh, and then, you know, what is the initiation criteria for a fiber reinforced composite, right? So this would be based on the Hashim's theory. Uh, so we can go through and do this, and uh, you know, again, depending on the level of complexity you want to incorporate in here, uh, we can you know turn on or keep off the the element destruction in here to really understand how the part then is damaged. So progressive uh, damage of fiber reinforced deposits. This is very um, very detailed stuff, but again, I'm just kind of briefing you on a lot of the general capabilities that we have and if you have any specifics towards any of these in particular you know please don't hesitate to, to contact us but we provide two additional damage models for uh, fiber reinforced composites uh, and you may or may not be familiar with our um, our user material routines but depending on what you want to model here you can create your own user material uh, relational information, plug that into the model, and then, you know, if you have your own specifics, you can incorporate that into a, a very detailed 
model here as well. Okay. So failure measures uh, based on a lot of 3D stresses built into here. So this is an example of maybe some of these information uh, in, in the models here for the, the user variables and the user materials coming through, evaluating the, the different failure criteria. Uh, electromagnetic simulation or lightning strike or lightning signal. Uh, a lot of capability that we have vested here. We've worked a lot with our, our friends at NIAR uh, who have a built up test lab to do some actual lightning strike tests in their lab. Uh, and I encourage you to contact them if that's something of interest to you to kind of work that out. But we've taken a, a really good look at some different ways to, to be able to do this. So uh, by using a lot of our electromagnetic sort of capabilities that we also have inside of Abacus and coupling that with our, um, our stress capability and our strength capability, we're able to then start to take a look at uh, some different sort of electromagnetic simulations or, or lightning strikes. So, you know, depending on what the energy input is from these sort of electro simulations, you can, you know, then evaluate, you know, on the different ply levels or the different bases, uh, how that affected those components, and then incorporate that into a, a you know, a stress sort of simulation analysis there as well. Okay crack propagation using XFEM. This is our mesh independent crop crack propagation tool. Um, we also have, uh, you know, the VCCT technique, which allows you to kind of already have your crack line um, initiation already guessed out. But through the use of XFEM, we're using a lot of different energy techniques in here to then go ahead and split and remesh the items as it goes through and really start to understand how the cracks are going to go through uh, in a mesh independent sort of fashion. And this is, works for composites, this works for you know any, any materials that we have here as well. So you can couple a lot of these uh, techniques here as well. So you can already see where we have a, some sort of a cohesive crack that we already know about. And then we want to understand where is that going to go from under a specific loading criteria using XM. Delamination modeling. So if, as I previously mentioned, if you kind of have an idea where you're going to have uh, your, your separation for your bonded sections or laminated composites, uh, you know, we can come through and use our cohesive behavior to model delamination. Uh, so again, another great way to model the performance of your parts during various loading conditions. Uh, VCCT, it's a very classic historical way to simulate brittle crack propagation along a predefined surface. So if this is what you're going to want to study, we also have some specific uh, routine capabilities to do VCCT as well. And that stands for Virtual Crack Closure Technique. Um, okay. So in summary, uh, for our analysis capabilities that we have built directly in, uh, I've covered a lot of our modeling capabilities, uh, a lot of our general modeling techniques, uh, predictive failure, so interlaminar crushing, a lot of advanced techniques here as well, visualization, maybe taking a look at your ply stack plots, validating at the design or manufacturing stage that uh, you know you are simulating what has been designed and what you think has been designed, uh, and then perhaps automating or using some of those optimization routines, whether you're using the classical eyesight technique or taking a look at some of the process composer items. So that kind of really um, gives us a, a good breadth and depth overview of the capability for creating the designs, creating the modeling layout, the composite layout, going through and looking at a lot of the high level capabilities that we have for our composite simulation capabilities. Um, in closing, what I would like to do though, is I would like to kind of expose you a little bit to some of our, uh, our manufacturing simulation capabilities here as well. Um, so we have a multi-scale approach for composites for injection molding. So if you have an injection molded part, uh, we have our simple products here that we can start to 
uh, evaluate from an injection molding sort of process where we can go through and now taking a look at orientation mapping uh, of uh, you know maybe like fiber injected molded parts or actual you know uh, plastic molded parts there as well with all of the the orientation and lining up of the material grains you know taking that information then and evaluating that in a uh, structural simulation so whether we're going through again and doing a manufacturing simulation uh, wound composites so we have a wound composite modeler if that's the only composite products that uh, you're actually developing. You may want to take a look at the wound composite modeler to generate that layup information. Uh, you know, whether we're looking at pressure tanks or wounded wounded tanks, um, we can do that here as well. And you know, go ahead and directly, as we did with the layup information, you know, utilize this composite winding in a simulation here as well. Compro is another great. Uh, add-in capability that we have inside of our Abacus solution. What this basically is, is you know, it's going through and putting you know, the, the uh, composite simulation for the autoclave. So if you have gone ahead and designed your parts uh, utilizing any of our tools here, you can simulate the autoclave procedure here with the temperature distributions and the pressure mapping to then really understand what is the shape of the part after it comes out of the oven. Right, uh, so we may design a part as we think it's going to fit on our vehicle, aircraft, automotive, whatever. Uh, a lot of times, that's the way we design it is how we think the end product should be. But in actuality, it may get put in an autoclave and it may not resemble our design intent whatsoever. So we have uh, this sort of process to go through and evaluate what is our spring back or you know what is our final part going to look like after it comes out of the oven is it still within all my tolerance values and then also rtm so if you have uh, rtm molded composites uh, we have a, a way to go through and you know predict what is that uh, resin transfer that goes into that mold there as well do i get full penetration do i have gaps or voids in there and also, you know, uh, during that curing simulation, what is my spring back off of that as well? Is my part still within tolerance as I need it to in the operation? And that kind of really sums it up. Uh, hopefully, we've been able to give you a, a really good overview of a lot of our capabilities. I know there was a lot there, and I know I talked really fast. <laughs> So maybe if this was recorded and you, you can play it back at, you know, three-quarter speed or half speed, uh, you should be able to get a lot more of that uh, out of there. But um, thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, I really appreciate the, the time you spent here to listen to this. And, again, please don't hesitate to contact us if you think of any questions afterwards. And with that, um, I think we um, might have some time to open this up for a, a few uh, questions. Yes, thank you. thank you, Greg, for that awesome presentation. That was really great. Um, so guys, we are taking questions now. If you guys have anything you want to ask, uh, please uh, let us know. There's a little Q&A uh, tab at the bottom of your screen in the middle. So please type in your questions and um, we'll try our best to get them answered. So Greg, one question we have is, how do we access composite model design in 3D experience? How do we access composite model design in 3D experience? Um, well, uh, assuming you already have the 3D experience um, client and installation already installed, uh, you would just need you know, a, a license for the composite design. We have a, a few different of those, composite engineering or composite manufacturing, and uh, you would just locate that through our Compass Action and uh, go right directly to um, the composite design workbench. So I don't know if that uh, is a, a direct answer, but just as you would access part design or assembly design, there would be another little, uh, app launcher right there as well.
Thank you, Greg. It seems like we have another question. Is there a possibility to have on-site support or help for Abacus? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a yes from Vice as well. Uh, we do provide um, oh on-site support and help for advocates. Shri, would you mind answering this one? Yeah. Uh, hello, uh, this is Shri. Yeah, on-site support. I I'm assuming are they asking us to visit their site and do something, or is it? Um, I'm not sure what kind of support they're looking for. But if that's the case, uh, we can definitely talk. Uh, maybe uh, um, if you have some particular needs, yes, we can definitely look into that. Yeah. We do provide yeah. this uh, training if that's what you're asking. Yeah, Sri, uh, Kanish, this is Arindam here. Hi, uh, yeah. So to add on to that, yeah, we'll, we can provide on-site support and as well as we, we, are, we are flexible. So depending on your schedule, we can split it up uh, into weeks. And also we can do like a customized thing. So if you have multiple different like interests so we can combine them doesn't have to have like out of the box uh, entire course so we can do all those things to help you guys yeah. perhaps we should have got a quantifier on that maybe they're in antarctica you know um and... <laughs> <laughs> thank you arindam so Greg, we have one more question. How do we model damage and fracture in composites in 3D experience? <laughs> um, so again, it, it'll depend on the level of dammer, damage and fracture that you want to take a look at. We have some damage criteria already inside of 3D experience that you can evaluate. So whether uh, that damage criteria like the, the Hashim's or uh, you know, some of those other in the post processor is, you know, uh, good for what you want to do, then that's perfect. But if you need to get to that high fidelity level of doing uh, like the, the crack propagation or the, the fine detailed uh, delamination, uh, we would still want to be able to do that um, in Abacus CAE currently. But if you have an, again, I come back to this, if you have an immediate need uh, that you want to do this today, uh, please contact us and we'll look at your specific model and, you know, obviously uh, give you the best input that we can for that particular solution. Because a lot of times, you know, people that will have a question about damage, um, really all they are caring about is, is the strains and, you know, interlaminar uh, shear stress or something like that. And that we can definitely handle inside a 3D experience. That's no problem. So we'd probably want to look at your precise model, get a little bit more detail, and then steer you uh, in the direction that's most appropriate. All right, thank you for answering that, Greg. Are there any other questions, guys? Let's wait uh, a minute or so more. If not, then we can conclude this webinar. Okay, seems like uh, we don't have any more questions. Oh, we do, we, we have one more question. Do you have material libraries for plastics and aluminum? We are, I used to say no. Um, we, we uh, historically, we were not providing uh, material catalogs for materials. However, uh, we have realized this has been a, a great request from a lot of people in industry. So, yes, we are starting to provide some material catalog information. It's not um, what would come pre-installed inside of the, the platform, um, but we can, you know, help make some of that information available to you, yes. Okay, I have one more question will the presentation be made available so yes guys this session is being recorded and i will send it out to all attendees shortly after this webinar ends okay so one more question so for fracture predictions do you you need material property curve inputs from us greg that's for you uh i guess it would depend on what materials you have possibly um, 
we, we have some of that information, but again, it'll probably depend uh, maybe what material you have. So uh, I don't know, maybe if you're getting the, the names of these folks, um, maybe you can, we can try to contact them afterwards and uh, get more specifics. Yeah, we can definitely reach out to you after the webinar and um, talk to yeah. you about, you know, how we can best help you out. Yeah. I have one more question asking uh, who, what's the best contact for support? So guys, uh, we can be reached at info at viascorp.com or support at viascorp.com. I'm also going to write these email addresses in, a, in the chat box so that all of you guys can see it. Please let us know if you have any other questions. Okay, we have one more question asking if, if VIAS provides licensing support. So yes, we do. If you guys have any questions about licensing, please feel free to shoot us an email and um, uh, we can definitely help you out with that as well. So you can email us at info at viascorp.com. Okay, I think that's all the questions. Okay, one last question. Uh, does VIAS <laughs> help in vibration simulation? I think Arindam, you'll be the best person to answer this one. Does VIAS help yeah. in vibration simulation? Yes, yes, we do. Uh, we, we can always help you out, uh, both uh, with if you have a project need or uh, if you want to know how to do it in Abacus. So we can help you out in both ways. And for vibration also, I want to mention, we, we actually have a, maybe Kanis, you can, uh, share the link as well so we have a had a recent fpca webinar so it's uh, more on the fatigue analysis so it can be uh, for vibration fatigue as well so we can share that information with you thank you all right thank you random thanks any other questions guys Okay, I don't see any more questions. So thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you so much, Greg and Sri uh, and Arindam for uh, helping with the questions. Uh, I will be sending out the recording of this session shortly. Um, in the meantime, if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to email us and um, we're here to help. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.